everyone, my name is Jazz and welcome to another episode of Wildlife Matters. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Now that we're going through this global pandemic, it's important that we think about the ways that our everyday decisions are affecting the environment and the planet. So for today's episode, we wanted to stray away from the typical animal topic and we want to talk about ways that we can actually contribute to saving the earth. I'm not going to go and talk about things like using less plastic or switching to plastic straws because everyone knows about that already and that's a good thing, right? Supermarkets are now going plastic free, food and beverage chains are going strawless, and a lot of people have switched to using metal straws and washable containers and utensils when they eat outside. These are great things that a lot of us already know. You probably also already know that it's important to conserve water and energy because if you're still wasting them, what the heck are you doing, right? For the sake of this video, I'm not gonna go ahead and mention all those things that you already know because there's still so much more that we can do to save the environment aside from all those things. Today, I'm going to talk about ways that you can make this ECQ lockdown time more eco-friendly and how you can use this ECQ lockdown to make greener choices that matter. So let's get to it. What are the ways that we can have an eco-friendly lockdown? Number one, grow a veggie garden. Since we're all advised to stay at home, the safest way for you to still be able to eat healthy is to regrow your vegetables at home. With the veggies that you've purchased from your last supermarket trip, you can take the stems and regrow them in your home. You can do this by first taking the stem and soaking it in water for around one to two weeks. After two weeks, you can transfer them to soil and see your veggies eventually start to grow. And you can do this with any amount of space you have, whether you have a huge house, a big garden, or even just a small apartment unit. If you don't have space to plant things, search your house for containers you're not using, like microwavable containers, empty mason jars, empty tin cans, or you can even try cutting out those empty plastic bottles. You can use any of those things to grow veggies and even herbs as well. And it's just gonna be inside your home. You can also check out other innovative ways to do urban farming, like vertical gardening, window gardening, rooftop gardening, and even aquaphonics, which is perfect for those of you guys who have pet fish. Yes, you can actually farm using an aquarium. Isn't that awesome? Look it up on the internet. These are all eco-friendly in many ways because you won't have to go outside and waste fuel to go to the supermarket to get your veggies because now your veggies will be organically grown. And you won't have to risk exposing yourself to the virus either because again, you'll be doing all of this inside your home. Number two, manage your pet's waste. An important part of gardening is using fertilizer. And manure, or poop, is nature's fertilizer. If you have a garden, you can repurpose your pet's waste and turn it into vermicast. If you bury your pet's waste underground, eventually earthworms can eat it and produce a fertilizer called vermicast. This type of fertilizer is perfect for planting and farming. So remember how I mentioned in my first point that for you to grow your veggies, you have to soak the stems in water for one to two weeks? Well, after those one to two weeks, you can transfer those stems to the soil that you have that has now become vermicast and just wait for it to eventually grow. Thanks to your pet's manure. Number three, declutter your home. Now that it's locked down, you finally have all the time in the world to declutter your home. Start decluttering bit by bit 
room per room and separate the things that you haven't been using or that you feel like you don't need. Or as a famous minimalist guru would say, things that no longer spark joy. But don't just get rid of these items. You can donate these items to charity give them to a friend in need, sell it online, or even recycle or upcycle it into something else. Don't throw it away, find a new purpose for it because that way you can start to practice having a waste-free lifestyle. Number four, read and learn. It's important to put purpose into what you're doing. If there wasn't any purpose in any of those things that we're doing right now, then why even do them at all, right? You're not just being eco-friendly for the sake of it or for the sake of following a fad or whatever is cool nowadays. There's a purpose to what you're doing and it's to make a good impact on the planet. Read up or watch documentaries about climate change and maybe even research about more ways that you can apply sustainable living. But like I always say, if you're gonna research on something, make sure that your articles are credible. Number five, apply. Application is important. If we're not gonna apply any of those things that we're learning at all, then all this information is just gonna be useless. You need to understand that all of this isn't just for planet Earth. It's for you as well. If we take care of the Earth, we take care of ourselves. You may be wondering, what's an animal show like Wildlife Matters got to do with going green and plants and saving the environment? Well, one thing that people always miss out on is knowing that in order to save wildlife, we have to save their habitat. We have to save the environment. You know, everyone is always arguing about how animals don't belong in zoos or conservation centers or sanctuaries and that they belong in the wild. And yes, that is true. Wild animals do belong in the wild. But there's barely any wild left for them to live in. And I don't mean to be harsh or anything, but all of that is on us because we took their habitat away from them. We destroyed their habitats. We took it from them. We took their homes from them. Thanks to things like industrialization, modernization, and deforestation. Slowly but surely for the past thousands of years, we have been wiping out their homes. It's hard to say that you care for conservation if you don't care for the environment. Because in the first place, not giving a damn about the environment is one of the major reasons that caused problems like extinction and population decrease. I've said this in our last video and I'll say it again. Everything is interconnected in the circle of life, even plants and animals. No plants means no animals. So that is all for today's episode. Those are just some of the many things that you can do to make greener choices and to save the environment. There are still so many other ways out there, so don't forget to research so that you can make a difference. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and don't forget that every piece of wildlife matters. Mali, na ng mayo, na ng program. Sa na trabaho sa Sa na trabaho sa Tiger, two months.